Hey folks, Dan Freer here, The Mortgage Update. Today is June 5th, 2020. So I asked one of the team members, Alan Platt, to come in today. And this is our first live YouTube live. So we're going to start doing this every Friday. And the whole gist of it is to educate you guys out there uh, looking to buy a house or get refinance a home and just make, you know, be a good financial steward of your money. And the biggest misconception right now, and we're going to address that today, is how much money you need to buy a house. And there's, it's a huge misconception when we talk to a lot of people. They're like, you know, I need 20% down. No, you don't. You know, I need this. I need that. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. So that getting started, it's a great time. Like we're just, we're, the pandemic's kind of starting to, to ease. I've had several calls this week. Even people that I've pre-approved that are looking to buy houses, they're like, oh my God, a ton of houses just came on the market. Yeah, I'm seeing it in my neighborhood too. It's it's going to be hot. This yeah. Summer. So I I mean, usually the market opens up. And it's weird. It's like Super Bowl Sunday hits and then Monday the phones start ringing. Uh, but now there's a delay because of the pandemic and now, you know, a lot of other events that are taking place. But um, so when you have, I, I mean, you've been doing this a long time. You mm -hmm. have a client that calls and, you know, I always, you know, what's your, I, I, I hate this word. What's your pitch when they're calling you? So they're like, hey, Alan, I'm looking to get pre-approved for a house. You know, you, you're the, you're the advisor. What do you what do you think I should do? How to do it? Why? When? Where? What? And how? Yeah, I mean, I'll, when you when you're buying a house, the, the, there's really three things that a bank a lender will look at: credit, income, and down payment. And a lot of people think that, well, you know, I, I don't have twenty percent down. Or, you know, I don't have a big down payment, so I'm probably not going to get approved. Or right. they're really stressing out about it. But <clears throat> there's a lot of programs where you really only need 3% down. Yeah. And with the rates being as low as they are, I usually advise people, you know, save the money, put little down, and you're financing at a low rate that, you know, it's going to be yeah. better than, lower than um, your re return if you keep the money in the bank. I had a I had a client yesterday. And he's uh he's out in California, and he's like, yeah, I pulled his credit, and I'm like, your credit scores are are kind of low. Uh, they're good enough to qualify, but they're kind of low because you have a ton of debt. He's like, well, I got a bunch of money in the bank. I can pay it all down. And I, he, you know, he said I was gonna look. I was looking to put down a you know fairly sizable down payment, but he had probably fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt. And he owns his own business. And he's like, I got the money set aside. So my comeback was, is, you know, I, I wouldn't use all my, deplete all my money to put in the home. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to drive up his mortgage balance, but you're going to get a rate, say, in the 3 or 4% range. Your credit card debt is probably 12 to 25%. Right. What, would, what should you prepay? The twenty percent interest rate or the three percent interest rate. I mean, that's pretty simple. Yeah. Um, and another thing is the difference in the payment between a twenty percent down payment and like three or five right. is not that noticeable. Right. It, it, it's amazing how much you know. Somebody would say, "Okay, if I put another twenty five hundred bucks down, what's that do to my payment?" It changes about like five dollars. Yeah, and they're like, "Really? Yeah." So keep that money because when you get in the house, you're probably going to paint. You buy, buy towels, buy a, yeah, appliances, buy curtains, um, and it goes. My son just bought a house, and he gets in there, and you know, I, I said, you know, you want my my uh, lawnmower and this and that, and he's like, no, no, no. He's in the house for a month now. He's hey, you still have that lawnmower? <laughs> you still, it, the, you know, the stuff adds up fast. Oh, absolutely. So the just the show. Let's talk about. We're going to talk about some programs and getting you into uh, a home with the least amount of money down. So the programs. You know, believe it or not, throughout the country, and we, we, we're dealing with about 44 states right now, is we're getting some U.S. I think you have a couple USDA loans. Yeah. Yeah, you do have some USDA loans. The Let's go down that path real quick. USDA. Now, who qualifies and how do they figure out if they qualify? Yeah, so USDA is uh, United States Department of Agricultural, and they have a program, Rural Development. So you can there's a tool online that you can go to to plug in an address and it'll tell you if your home or the home you want to buy is what's called a rural area. Yeah. And you know what everyone thinks of rural is probably not what the government thinks of. I always thought I mean, it was a farm. Yeah. Or I had to buy a farm. It's like there's plenty of areas that yeah. qualify that are for all 
intensive purposes, urban. So, I did a condo. Yeah, in a rural area. In a USDA. Yeah. And I was like, huh? Yeah. And so they, fit. yeah, they want to kind of stimulate the um, population in those areas and incentivize people to purchase there. So they allow no money down. So it's 100%, 100% financing. So in that case, zero down. Right. Uh, the next lowest down payment program. Well, there's a conventional, um, which everyone's heard of, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. They'll allow 3% down. Yeah, three percent down is a great option. And the, the the stipulations behind that is you have to be a first time home buyer, and that's anyone who hasn't bought in the last three years or been on title to a home. Right. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So that's three percent down. So and then the next step is um, FHA. Oh, we forgot something. VA. If you're a veteran out there, that's the way to go. Yep. If you're buying a house uh, and you're a veteran, please make sure you explore um, the VA program. It, you've earned it. Thank you for doing what you did. Uh, you earned it, and we'd be more than happy to help you through that process. All veterans, too, is it, it, most likely you're going to need an appraisal. We'll cover that cost for you as a thank you by us. Um, so that's the VA piece of things. So now let's drill down. Let's drill on the most basic. First time home buyer. It's a young couple that's getting into a house. Uh, the 3% down program. They get into that. So they need 3% down. But there's more than that. There's more fees than that. So this is where a lot of people get stuck. They're like, okay, I got the 3% down. And then we get them the loan estimate. Mm-hmm. And they're like, wait a second. I, you know, I'm buying a $200,000 $200, house. I got six grand. That loan estimate you gave me, you know, I need... Twelve thousand dollars, right? Why? Yeah. Um, so you you need when you buy a house, there's down payment and then the closing cost associated with the loan. And for a purchase, they do add up. Um, you're going to have various fees that you have to pay to third party companies, and you have to establish an escrow account, which is the majority of the closing cost. Yeah. So it's the down payment plus the closing cost and the escrow. So what I always like to explain too. So we'll, we'll go kind of in depth on this one. When when you're buying a house, there's I'm, I look at it as two different buckets. There's and we're going to talk about cost right now or fees. So you need your three percent down. So you need that six thousand dollars. You know, if you're buying a two hundred thousand dollar home, um, so you need three percent, which is six thousand bucks. But there's more to it. So you're going to need normally lender fees are going to be about twelve hundred bucks. So let's put that down twelve hundred dollars on top of that. The next piece of the equation is you're going to need an appraisal. That's usually about four to five hundred bucks. Okay, so that's so now let's break out the lender fees are the twelve hundred dollar in lender fees plus five hundred dollars for the appraisal. Let's assume that that's it. That's about what we have. A lot of other places they're going to add thousand dollars for processing, a thousand dollars for underwriting, a thousand dollars for admin fee, a thousand dollars. It could really add up. And don't be surprised if you get back and the lender fees are five thousand bucks. Then the next bucket is the the legal fees, the title, yeah. the title insurance. Somebody asked me yesterday, is that mandatory? I don't know by law if you have to, but I don't think any lender out there will do a loan. I haven't seen it happen. I've never seen it happen in 30 years. So now there's the legal side of the equation. Us as the lender, no matter where you're going, we don't have control over that piece of the puzzle. Your attorney and the seller attorney, they're going to work on those things. Don't be surprised if it comes back and it's three to five thousand dollars for your legal fees, and then you're going to probably pay your attorney five hundred bucks. So let's say that that's going to be we're, we'll bottom line at it four thousand dollars for your legal stuff. Okay, so we got twelve hundred dollars and five hundred dollars for your lender costs. So that's seventeen hundred plus four thousand in legal bills. So we're at fifty seven hundred dollars. On top of the six thousand dollars you needed as the down payment, so that's why our loan estimate or our our numbers back to you guys came back, and you you thought you needed six grand, but you need twelve thousand. So Alan's job now is to say, okay, we get you pre-approved. Now his job is to educate you guys to let's dwindle that down because we know, let's say in your case, you only have the six thousand dollars and and you don't have the twelve. So you're thinking, I can't buy a house now. Yeah. Well, you can. And in comes Alan. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, I advise a lot of people when, when they first start 
you know, looking at homes is to uh, talk about with your realtor a seller credit. Uh, what a seller credit is basically is they will credit you um, money at closing for the closing cost that Dan just went over, the legal fees, the lender fees, um, all that stuff that adds up. You can really get the seller to pay for it. And a lot of times, I would say nine times out of 10, I see a contract with seller credits in there. And, you know, at the end of the day, the seller really only cares about what they're walking away with. Right. So more than likely, they will agree to some form of seller credit um, in the negotiation period. So I think that's one of the best options out there is to get them to pay for some of your costs that you're going to, you know, have to be charged when you buy a house. So seller credits are huge. In my so what do, you, what do you usually see on, Is it, are they picking up the all the legal fees or is it a percentage of the house value or how's it usually yeah, tagged? I'm usually, see, it's usually a percentage of the sales price. So if you're buying $200,000, I'm most likely seeing about a 3% credit. So that's $6,000 that they're going to pay for all your stuff. And that brings down dramatically yeah. what, what, what's, what that, you need at that, closing. That can do it right there. Exactly I mean, we right. just, you know, again, the, the legal side of this equation that we, we structured, it was $4,000. So now they're getting, well, and again, this is this is just generic numbers, but they're now picking up that legal side of the costs. So, but we still have, let's say in this case, they picked up 100% of that, um, the legal yep. side of the equation. But we still now have, there's two, there's the, one thing that I missed on my numbers is you have to set up an escrow account. Here's what that means is part of your payment, your mortgage payment is going to be the loan. And then a piece is your real estate taxes. And another piece is your homeowner's insurance. So what happens is we get your real, your tax bill, real estate tax bill. And let's say it's for simplistic reasons, it's $1,200 a year is your real estate taxes. So we break that in up into 12 months. That's how many months payments you're going to have in a year. So it's $100 a month is needed in your payment or added to your payment to set that money aside so when your tax bill comes due, uh, we can pay it. The same thing happens with your homeowner's insurance. So let's just say for simplistic reasons, again, your homeowner's insurance is $1,200 a year. We divide that by 12, put you at 100 bucks a month. So now what we have is we have your mortgage, your loan payment to buy the house, plus we added another $100 a month into that to pay your real estate taxes. Plus, we added a hundred dollars a month in there to pay your homeowners' taxes or homeowners' uh, policy when it comes due. So what happens is every month you make a payment, we pull out a hundred bucks, put it in your real estate tax savings account. We also pull out a hundred dollars and put it in your homeowners' insurance savings account, and it accumulates through the year. When the bill comes due, we pay it. So we have to usually set up about, let's just say on average, about six months worth of those numbers. So in this case, let's say we needed six months of your taxes at $100 and six months of your homeowner's insurance at $100. So there's $1,200 more we need. So let's scan back and I hope I'm not losing you. You need $6,000 for your down payment. You need $1,700 for all your lender costs. That includes your appraisal. And now you need $1,200 for your tax or your escrow account. Now we're down to or up to $8,900. Still $2,900 more than I have to bring to the closing. Mm -hmm. Now what? Well, in addition to the um, seller credit, you can get what we call a lender credit where the lender will help pay for some yeah. of your cost. How's that um, work? So it's really built into the interest rate. Um, so when you choose a rate, uh, with your mortgage professional, they'll go over options of, well, if you want this rate, there is uh, no no fee, no no discount points, no lender credit. But if we go a little bit slightly higher, you might get you know, a thousand bucks applied towards cl closing. Yeah. And it's yeah. not excessive. You might, you know, we might quote you back three and a quarter. Yeah. You might be at 3.375 and get, you know, a half a percent of your loan amount back. You're right. You know, yeah. so on a two hundred thousand dollar loan, that's a thousand bucks you're picking up just for a little increase in that mortgage rate. Yeah, which is about eight dollars a month in payment. Yeah, I mean so. it's still going to rack up over the life of the loan, sure. but it can get you into the house. Yeah, so that's that's a great option too. Is we can help 
Just like the seller can help pay for some of the costs, so can the lender. Right. So just by those two things, we're, we're talking about a seller credit and a lender credit. We just picked up in this case um, six, seven, maybe seven, eight thousand bucks. So we went from if we scroll back, we you needed twelve thousand dollars. We just picked up you know eight thousand of that. So bringing it down to let now we can get you into that house with that six thousand bucks you have. Um, so most likely less. Yeah, that's basically how the numbers works. And then at the end too, there's a tax proration. That's hard to explain. Do you know an easy way to explain that? Uh, I always tell people uh, at closing that the, the taxes are usually paid behind or, or they're not really current. So the county still needs to get paid the tax bill and they're going to bill whoever owns it at the time. But it's for the previous year. So the seller was the owner. So they owe you money at the closing for a credit. And I, I don't know, there's not a lot of states that do it this way, but Illinois, for example, in 2020, it's now 2020, we paid just now our June 2019 real estate taxes. Go yeah. figure. So what happens is if you bought your house, this, uh, you buy a, your house, um, you know, right now, we paid last year's taxes. It gets really complicated. So just put it this way in a, in a nutshell you're also going to get back from the seller some tax credits uh due to you by the counties in the state uh, yeah. so that dwindle down that number even a little bit more so this is how we can get you into a home um with three percent down for first-time home buyers and probably even dwindle that down a little bit more for you but um yeah so is that that's probably the number one question I get uh, a lot of times when I do have a client. They're they're just or they're when they're holding off. They're like, I just don't have the money. Or right. do you think I'm in a good position to do this? Yeah. Um, what's your comment if somebody says, Do you think it's it's the right time to buy now? Well, I, I always say absolutely because money is cheap right now, and there are tons of great deals and programs out there. Yeah. Um, you know, even if you're close, there's there's ways. To, to, to come up with the money needed for a down payment. Right. You can get a gift. A lot of people have money in a 401k that they can access that yeah. they kind of don't even really know. Um, so if you're close, more than likely we can figure something out. Yeah. And I just did an analysis last night um, to on a $250,000 mortgage. When you add all everything in, that payment's going to, was about sixteen seventeen hundred bucks. I just, there's, we have the millennial mortgage guys out here on our team and Nico lives downtown and he, you know, he says the average rents down there, easy 1800 to $2,000. Absolutely. So you can have, you can have a 250,000 plus home for cheaper than you can probably have a studio apartment downtown Chicago. Yeah. And, and then most rental places need one month security deposit and maybe yeah. sometimes two months. Right. So it's. Close to the down payment. And that's what some people don't realize, too. You might have some money coming back uh, from a security deposit that you had. So the whole gist of the show was we were trying to make it to show you or educate you or go through the numbers on how we can get you a house into a home with not 20%, not 10%, not 5 not 3 but under 3% as a first-time homeowner. Home buyer. So I hope you like the show. If you did, please reach out to us down below. I'm going to try to put a link into USDA, how you can apply online, how you can reach us. Please leave some comments. Um, Alan, if you would give us, give them the website phone number and then we'll be done. Yeah. Website is uh, the rate update .com. Phone number is 630-338-1160. 1160. Or if you're out of the state of Illinois and you're all over the country and you want a toll-free number, I don't really think it matters anymore. I remember when I used to call my folks, you know, once a week and I'd get my phone bill to be 300 bucks. Uh, if you need an uh, 800 number, it's 844-775-LOAN. It's 844-775-LOAN. So I hope you liked the, the video. Please don't forget to give us a th thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Please leave some comments. Let, let us know how we're doing and some content that you would like to see. So God bless. Have a great day and we will see you next time.